INSEAD is hosting its seventh annual private equity conference. Uh, Richard Wilson, welcome. Thank you. You are a partner at APAC, That's right. and you are specialized in uh, technology and telecoms That's right. uh, for APAC. As part of uh, the debate today about the state of private equity, um, you see private equity ultimately as part of the solution in this global economic crisis. Why is that? Well, there's a lot of debate um, with all the stress that's in the markets at the moment, but it has to be the case that with limited access to capital, you know, capital markets being tight, credit crunch being there, so the bank's nervous to lend, there has to be a source of capital that will help things along, and that's private equity. Private equity's got a lot of capital under management looking for opportunities to invest. But moreover, it's more than just capital. I think in this environment, people are looking for equity to help growth, and we need to grow out of this economic situation we're in. But uh, the, the relationship between the private equity industry and uh, the banking industry as a whole is there. So, I mean, is everybody said that the credit crunch has meant the death of private equity deals and so on. You don't seem to share that vision. I don't. I mean, the reality is that each time there's a downturn, there's another driver, a different driver for the downturn. This time, in this downturn, I think we've all been a bit shocked by the the size and the scale uh, of the downturn. But nevertheless, if I just cast my mind back even to the 2001 crisis in tech and telecoms, you had very similar patterns. Asset prices everywhere, the stock markets crashing in that area. You had no access to leverage and trading performance of portfolio companies was under pressure. But since then, wind the clock forward two years from that point, look how the industry bounced back. I think in reality, if you stand back and look at this situation in 10 years' time, you'll think this is potentially has been a great time to have been investing. In fact, these times are the times that private equity makes the best returns. Okay, but ultimately, does the private equity model still hold up in the absence of access to leverage? Everybody was saying for a while that private equity means returns through leverage, and you're saying that even without leverage, uh, it can function, or you're just saying leverage will come back and then the model will pick up again. What's the difference there? Well, I think the leverage is one component, but it's only one component of the returns from private equity. You typically get growth in returns. You get returns from EBITDA growth, profit growth, from multiples and leverage. Now, private equity, I think nobody disputes much now that the model itself is a superior model in terms of alignment of interests and governance and so forth. There isn't much data, unfortunately, that people can point to to say, here's been a large study on what the driver's returns are. But the facts, when you see pockets of the data, are that EBITDA growth in particular is a huge driver of returns. If we took our own portfolio as an example, we're at 16 17% EBITDA CAGA on average over 10 years. It's more than just about leverage. Uh, what, what do you see then as uh, the ultimate outcome of this crisis for the industry uh, in terms of uh, changing the way business is done or, or some of the practices? Uh, because everybody says this will be a big shakeout for the LBO market in particular. I mean, it's already started. But uh, w w what do you see happening as a result of the shakeout? Well, I heard some statistics from one of the sessions in the conference this morning that there are in excess of a thousand funds out there trying to raise capital from LPs in an environment where the limited partners, the LPs themselves, are, are cash constrained. So that immediately raises the question, is everybody going to be successful? And I think probably there will be a number of these firms that will you know, be not successful in raising the next funds. Ultimately, the limited partners have got limited capital. They will be choosing which funds they wish to back. They're going to be doing that based on you know, long-term performance. They're going to be doing that based on are these funds differentiated. And ultimately, I suspect that the, the winners, particularly the top quartile performers, will come through more strongly. But say the bottom quartile performers in returns will, you know, will fade away. But this, again, isn't new. If you look back, in fact, we own ourselves had a, had a little study done by one of the big firms. Interesting, if you look at the top 10 players, by, say, assets under management. In 1998, 2008, 10 years apart, if you look at two, in 1998, the top four no longer existed in the 2008 table, completely disappeared. If you look in 2008, 
six of the ten were new entrants. So it's not a new thing. Well, one of the things we heard one of the uh, speakers this morning say was that the passive strategy of private equity investment, minority stakes, uh, uh, hands-off management mm -hmm. uh, uh, is, uh, is over. It can't resist an entire business cycle. And the model that will uh, drive uh, future returns in private equity is the hands-on, very active strategy. Do you agree with that point of view? I do, but it's also not news. I mean, the passive, the, the concept of the passive investor went out many years ago. You know, I mean, the, most of the leading firms have active involvement. It's not just journey, turning up to board meetings. Usually they have uh, resources working uh, on a, an ongoing basis with the companies. In our own case, we've built up a complete for portfolio support group with 100-day planning teams with experienced execs that could be interim managers, with financing teams if there's ever stress from a debt, how you recover from that situation. We have secondments from the team into the company on long-term basis, six months, 12 months. So I think this, uh, this fashion, this, this concept of passive money, leverage up a cash flow, the private equity money firm will make money is outdated, it's old, it's, it's, it's yesterday's model. What, are you the, what do you see as the key success factors for tomorrow's model in private equity? Well, firstly, I think you need to get some growth. So just leveraging up a stable cash flow, as I say, is, is not the way forward. I think sector specialism is a key component. That's something that we do. We have five specific sectors because you need to look below the surface of the companies that you invest to understand what you're investing in. To do that, you need to build up years of track record, years of research and you know, thesis generation to figure out where to invest. So you need investment team executives who are sector guys. You need put portfolio value-added skills and you need to be hands-on. So you would agree with that same gentleman this morning who said the kind of profiles he would be looking to recruit aren't necessarily former investment bankers and deal <laughs> structures, but more like management consultants and uh, change management people. I think you need a mix of skills. I think the, the model of just having a team of financial engineers for sure is inappropriate. You need guys who are experienced deal doers. You need guys who are experienced managers uh, and drivers of EBITDA growth in companies as well as the portfolio basic skills. So very hands-on question to conclude, at Apex, what are the, some of the deals or types of transactions or sectors that are getting you excited right now where you see growth opportunities and possibilities to invest at reasonable valuations today? It's a mixture. I think you either see, for example, and by the way, the models differ in this environment from, from previous environments. So one of the recent deals that we did in, in the telecom sector was in a large mobile operator uh, holding company which was already a levered structure. It already had debt, but needed an equity injection to pay off some bills. So there is a great model for private equity. Inject the equity, it's already pre-levered, so that issue is not a problem. And then it's looking for growth because quite a bit of the, um, the revenues and profits from the company is coming from emerging markets in that case. So there's a great example. Uh, take um, our healthcare sector. Uh, they recently made an investment in a uh, an Indian hospital chain, fantastic demographic, no supply in terms of healthcare uh, provision in hospitals. It's a great growth business. Just a couple of examples. Richard Wilson, partner at Apex, thank you very much. Thank you.